If you're looking to deploy Copilot agents within your organization, then this video breaks down the three types of agents that you can create, and we will provide practical examples as well as the pros and cons for each. Hi, I'm Amy. Let's nerd out. Before we compare agents, let's first define what we mean by agent. In Microsoft 365, an agent is essentially an AI powered chatbot that can respond to questions based on your organization's data, like a SharePoint document library, or it can even guide users through processes. So you have a sales team, then you can create an agent to help your sales team work through a new lead in a funnel process. And lastly, in a more advanced scale, an agent can even complete tasks if actions have been defined. So. You give the agent instructions on how you want it to behave, as well as grounding it on specific data, such as a SharePoint document library, and basically pointing it to a specific knowledge base that you want it to work off of. So that is a simple example of how you can set up an agent. And the three types of agents that we are going to look at today are SharePoint agents, which are lightweight and easy to use, then the middle ground is declarative agents. And on the more advanced scale, we have custom engine agents. Now, just note that for your organization to deploy these and for users to be able to interact with these agents, the users either need to have a Copilot 365 add-on license. So for example, they need to have this work toggle in the chat experience, or your organization can be set up on a pay-as-you-go billing. And the last thing that I wanted to clarify was that from this agents drop down here, when we expand it, the, these ones up here, researcher analysts and surveys, those are agents that are created by Microsoft. And then down below here, these are agents that I have created in my Microsoft 365 environment. So today we are just focusing on these kinds of agents. But if you would like me to do a comparison of these other types of agents, then please drop a comment below. Let's start off with a SharePoint agent. These are the simplest and easiest to deploy, especially if your organization has content already in a SharePoint site. And if your organization just uses Teams and you don't think that you use SharePoint, every Microsoft team has a connected SharePoint site in the back end. So if your team stores documents inside of Teams channels, then those documents are actually stored on a SharePoint site. Now, there are two types of SharePoint agents. There are pre-built agents and there are custom agents. So let's pop in and take a closer look. Pre-built agents are available within every SharePoint site. So you just need to open up that site within SharePoint. Or if your files are stored within a team, then you can navigate to the files tab and then select the three dots on the top right and then go open in SharePoint. From SharePoint, we can head up to this icon on the top right, which is open agents. And these are the pre-built agents and they are already scoped to the content within your SharePoint site. So they're great for quickly gaining insights on your files and SharePoint site content without actually having to dig through the content itself. So these agents are great because they are pre-built right away. So your team can open them up at any time and ask questions. So for example, I've asked this agent to provide me with our sales return policy, and it has given me the answer here based on this sales policy and procedures document. So this has saved me a ton of time because instead of going through all of these files and folders and locating that specific sales policies and procedures document, you can just use natural language to chat with Copilot and quickly gain those insights. Now, the downside to these agents is that they are pre-built and we cannot customize them at all. So let's now take a look at how we can create a custom SharePoint agent. To create a custom agent, we can navigate to the folder that we want to act as our grounding data within the SharePoint site. And then from the top menu here, we simply select create an agent. And then we can go either open agent or edit agent. So you can see here that it is super quick and super easy to set up. Now from here, we can add an overview where you can give your agent a purpose 
as well as define sources. So in this case, I've already grounded it on this data within the sales area, but we can add up to 20 sources. And then on this other tab here, we can define behavior. So we can add a welcome message, which is going to appear at the top of the chat box. And then you can define some starter prompts, which are these right here. And then down below, we have agent instructions. And this is where you define how you want your agent to behave. Once you have created your agent, you can then access your SharePoint agents by going all agents. And you'll see it under this your agents at the top. So in this case, it was just that general agent. We can see I'm now chatting with this agent, but we can also access this agent from the regular chat area. We can just select this tools and then go explore more agents. And then we can locate that general agent there. So now I'm chatting with it and I didn't have to actually toggle to that agent. So we can see how easy these custom SharePoint agents are to set up. So for example, if you were in the HR department, you could have a folder within a SharePoint site full of resumes, and then you could quickly create an agent to help you gather insights from those resumes. So you could ask it to summarize which applicants have this skill or which ones went to this university. So you can save a lot of time by just creating an agent and grounding it on specific content within your SharePoint site. But the limitations with these agents is that we can only ground these agents on this one specific SharePoint site. And when I say grounding, I mean defining the sources here that the agent works off of. So we're only able to provide sources and relevant content from within this one SharePoint site. And the other limitation is that these are lightweight agents. There are no advanced features. So when you start to push those boundaries, that's when we get into the next level of agents, which are declarative agents. So let's pop in and take a closer look. With declarative agents, we are able to chat with them in this chat experience, just like how we saw with the custom SharePoint agents. So they are really easy for your users to engage and interact with. But the advanced features of the declarative agents is that we can ground them on other knowledge sources beyond one SharePoint site. So you can ground it on multiple SharePoint sites if you wanted to, or even point it to other applications such as Teams and Outlook. We really have a broad array of options on the knowledge source. Then we also have the ability to unlock advanced features such as Code Interpreter. So let's take a look at how we can create one of these declarative agents. To create a declarative agent, we just need to go to the Microsoft 365 homepage. And then under chats, we have agents. We can just expand that and then go down to create agent. This brings up a lightweight version of the Copilot Studio app where we can now create our agent. Now you might be tempted to follow this prompt here and use natural language to describe the agent that you want to create. But I do not recommend doing that here because I have lost all of my agent content within one prompt. Now I have a full other tutorial that provides you a step-by-step -step breakdown as well as a handful of practical examples of declarative agents that you can create. So I will link that video below and then you can check it out later. But in the meantime, I have created this other declarative agent, the puppy training chatbot. So if we hover over the agent name and then select the ellipses, we can go edit. And now we can just walk through the advanced features and what this looks like in the back end. Now, similar to the custom SharePoint agent, we have a name as well as description, which shows up in this chat experience on the right hand side. And then down below, we have these suggested prompts. So these are example prompts that your team members can use to kickstart a conversation with this agent. And just to note that on the right hand side here, this is just the preview. So when you are creating these agents, you can chat with it and test it out and just make sure that everything is working the way that you wanted to. That's a really important part about creating agents in any of the ways that you create them, we want to ensure that they are working and responding in the way that we want them to. But what sets these declarative agents apart are the knowledge sources as well as capabilities. 
So for the knowledge sources, we can enter URLs, upload files, use SharePoint, Teams, or even Outlook emails. So if we click in here, then at the bottom, we can go to sites, SharePoint files, folders, and sites, my team's chats and meetings, or even my emails. So previously we were just limited to a single SharePoint site. So here we are really expanding the capabilities and the knowledge source of this agent by giving it access to other resources. And beyond the knowledge sources, the declarative agents also give us advanced capabilities such as code interpreter and image generator. So with the code interpreter, if we just select this ellipses, then you'll see that this agent, if it's toggled on, this will convert natural language into code to create visualizations, solve math problems and analyze data. And then for image generator, if that is toggled on, then this agent will also be able to create visual aids like images and art in response to user prompts. So you can toggle on or off these capabilities depending on your own needs. A practical example of when you could create a declarative agent would be a customer resolution bot. And this would help your customer service team work through the resolution process step by step. So rather than having a manager available all of the time to answer questions and guide the team through next processes, you could create a declarative agent and ground it on the resolution process and provide examples in there. And then that agent can then support the customer resolution team. But really these agents are super flexible and there are so many practical examples of when you could use them. And this is just one of them. Once you have created your declarative agent, you can then either click the create button or the update button from the top and your agent will then be ready to use and accessible from the left navigation here. But these agents are also great because you can use them for your own personal use or we can even share them with our team members. So you can share it to anybody in your organization or even specific users in your organization, granting access to this agent. So we can see that declarative agents are super flexible. They are easy to set up. We can expand their knowledge bases and even give them those advanced capabilities and chat with them through the regular Copilot chat experience. However, these agents are less customizable than the custom engine agents. And we are not able to grant this agent any capabilities to actually take an action based on a triggered event. So let's now pop into the custom engine agents and see how we can create one of those. Custom engine agents give you full control over your agent. So we can connect it to an array of knowledge sources via connectors so that you can connect it to different applications or even to other agents so that they can work together and respond. And in addition to that, we can also define triggers and actions, which tell your agent that, hey, when X event happens, then take Y action. So instead of these agents just responding to questions in a chat experience, they're actually able to take action and complete workflows. So as you can imagine, the options are limitless and there is a lot of powerful features within these agents. So there are a few ways that we can create a custom engine agent. And the low code way, which is the easiest way to get started is via the Copilot Studio full app. And that's what I have pulled up here. So let's pop in and take a closer look. From the Copilot Studio homepage, at the bottom here, we have this explore agents. So this can give you an idea of some of the agents that we can create in Copilot Studio. And one of the most common agents would be a website Q and A. So most of us are familiar with that experience on a business's website, you pull up that little chat icon and then you can start asking questions and it's going to respond and give you answers based on the website data. So that is an AI chat bot working in the back end to first understand your questions and then give you a response. But that is a very basic uh, example of a Copilot Studio agent. So let's now pop in and create an agent and take a look at all of the additional functionality. If we go and create an agent, go new agent, then this will pull up a very similar view to what we saw earlier when we were creating 
the declarative agent. You can provide a prompt and then your agent will appear in the right hand side. And we have that configure tab where you can configure your agent to all of your ideal content. But I've already created an agent, so I'm just going to cancel this agent creation. And now I'm going to go to my agents and I'll just expand this agent one. And now we can take a closer look at all of the additional functionality that we have once that agent has been created. From the top, we can see that we have a lot of advanced tabs to help us create our agent. And we even have a tab for analytics. And then if we scroll on down, we have some similar features such as the name and the description, but we also have some advanced tools that are different such as tools, triggers, agents, and topics. So let's take a closer look at each of those and see what additional features we are unlocking. For knowledge, if we click add knowledge, then we will see that we can now connect to public websites and SharePoint, Azure, Dataverse, ServiceNow, Salesforce, or even Dynamics 365. So we are now expanding beyond the basic Microsoft 365 knowledge bases that we were able to define in the declarative agents, which was just SharePoint, Teams, and Outlook. So if your organization uses any of these other tools, then you are now able to create agents that are grounded on that additional data source. So we're already unlocking a lot more potential with these agents for those advanced organizations. Next up, we have tools. So here we can add tools to empower the AI to complete specific tasks or improved engagement. If we go add a tool, then you are going to see some suggested tools at the top here, or we can see all of these different connectors down below. So for example, if we expand this Microsoft Teams connector, then we're going to unlock the functionality that this agent has. So for example, we can have this agent create a new Microsoft team. So these are just a couple of examples of those tools that we can add as connectors to our agent. It's going to leave here. Then down below, we are able to define triggers. So set up your agent to activate when a certain event happens. So when X event happens, then do Y. So if we go add trigger, then we can see the available triggers for our agent. So for example, if you want this to happen on a schedule, for example, every day or every week, then you can define a reoccurrence or you could do when a new response is submitted in Microsoft Forms when an item is created or modified within SharePoint. And if you are familiar with Power Automate, then you might see some similarities here, right? So when an item or a file is modified within SharePoint, then do X. So these are just an example of some of the triggers that we can define with our agents. Just going to close out of here. Then down below, we can connect your agent with other agents dedicated to handling steps of your workflow. Now this concept of adding an agent to your agent to perform tasks might sound like a bit of an odd concept. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit because let's imagine that you are trained on a broad skill set, then you are going to have a broad general knowledge of a bunch of different pieces. Whereas if you specialize in a certain subject, then you are going to be able to perform that one particular task really well and at a high level. So we can apply the same concept to agents. If you create an agent to perform a single task and do it really well, then you can connect multiple highly specialized agents, to complete specific workflows within this one agent's workflow. So we can see that there is a lot of opportunity here with these custom engine agents. Of course, the downside is that there is going to be a lot more legwork involved to get yourself up and running. But if you do have any real life scenarios of how your organization wants to utilize these custom engine agents, then please drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you so that I can create some better content. But in the meantime, you can watch this video here to learn how to build declarative co-pilot agents like a pro 
and be sure to download my Copilot Agent Toolkit here.